Hey everybody, welcome to Our Worship Sound. My name is Peter, and today we're doing a follow-up video on Ableton Live, and I'm going to show you how I compile four or five different songs into a single Ableton project for use in a live worship set. I'm also going to show you how I set up a, a MIDI controller to launch the different uh, tracks quickly and easily. Um, so first of all, let's start with a blank Ableton project file and my 25-key M-Audio O2 controller. I'm not going to use any of these keys to actually play any actual sounds. They're just going to be for starting and stopping different uh, tracks and loops. Uh, we're going to set a preference with Enable 10 to make sure that we're communicating correctly with the controller. So in the preferences, go into the MIDI Sync tab. Find your MIDI controller input and make sure it's set to Track Off and Remote On. Once that's set, we're ready to um, start mapping different keys to different features on the software. To do that, we're going to click on the MIDI button up here, MIDI Mapping Motor. You can also do Command-M. And once you click on something in the software, and then you click on something on your controller, you've linked those two items. So on the first scene, I'm going to link that to the C on the keyboard. Now, if you remember from the previous video, I typically set up each song with five different scenes. The first scene being uh, something that just launches the um, the project tempo or the song tempo. The second one is kind of like the full length track. The third and fourth ones are different um, kind of flex options. And then the fifth is typically a loop. So that corresponds with the 25 key controller in this way is that I usually set up five different keys starting on each C and each F. So on each C, one, two, three, four, five. And then on the F, one, two, three, four, five. So another set of Cs, another set of keys starting on F. That leaves uh, five other keys that I can use for different functions that I'll show you um, during this video. So going back to this, we're going to set up scene uh, one to go with the C key there. Scene two, the full track is going to go on the D. And then the flex option, the first black key, um, the second flex option, the second black key, and then the... Um, the last key will be the loop. Okay, I'm going to do the sa same for um, the next set, next set starting on F, and then full track, flex, flex, loop. Go up to the C, tempo, full track, flex, flex, loop, and one more time. I typically get this set up uh, Whoops, what did I do wrong here? I typically get this set up once and then just keep this as a file that I continually uh, rename and just kind of use it as a template. Okay, so I've got all those mapped. I'm going to create two extra scenes that I'm going to map to the B flat and the B natural in the middle of the keyboard. So that leaves me with just the three keys at the top of the keyboard. I'm going to use the B natural to map to the stop key. So that just stops everything. This stop clips button, I'm going to map to the top C. And that will stop all the audio playback, but it'll keep the metronome going. Um, to start the metronome, because live sets um, open by default with the metronome off. And so I like to be able to just turn the metronome on by hitting a key on the keyboard. So that uses all our keys. Now I'm going to use three of the rotary encoders. So map one of them to volume. So just twist the knob a little bit to map that. And then I'm going to um, use the next knob to affect the um, Q mix output, which will raise and lower the uh, volume of the metronome. And then for another rotor encoder, I'm going to go in the master output, and I'm going to put in EQ8 because I'm going to make this fourth filter a high cut filter or low pass. And then I'm going to use the third rotary encoder in from the right to affect the cutoff frequency of that filter. And this allows you to do some cool things on the fly with loops and such, like drum loops. Okay. And the last thing we're going to do to set up our uh, template here is to um, put a limiter on the master output just to keep the levels from distorting. Okay, I'm going to close out this area. And now we're ready to start importing songs. So you're just going to drag in the project file. Okay, so I've got this song set up with five different scenes. Get rid of those first two tracks. 
Okay, if I click uh, here. Okay, now I have this extra click track in here um, because there's some meter changes in this song. I'm just, we're just going to forget like that's there. Actually, we're not going to pretend. We're just going to actually get rid of it. So if I start the tempo and turn on the metronome, and then I launch the first scene, you can hear that the metronome and the music are out of sync. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these scene labels to link the project tempo with the song. So here I'm going to do Command R for rename, and then type in 148 space BPM for beats per minute. And then before I hit enter, I'm going to do Command A for select all, and then I'm going to copy it with Command C. Go down here to the next scene, I'm going to do Command R, and then Command V for rename paste and then do the same thing for the other scenes of that song rename paste rename paste rename paste we're going to do that quite a few more times before we're done all right so we have the first song set up the metronome lines up with the music and we're ready to add our next song which is going to be christ is ridden risen which is a very cool song from a group called the brilliance now this is on the same uh scene as the first song so we need to bring it down to the the next five scenes so i'm going to click here on the first clip go down here shift click to get all these and one way that you can get them in place is just to simply drag them i'm going to go ahead and rename these scenes now not 254 154 space bpm select all copy rename paste rename paste rename paste rename paste all right and then i'm going to go ahead and move these scene label clips all the way over to the left so I can just look at this one column and see all the different scene labels together. All right, so now we have our next group set up on this group of keys, starting on F. And you can hear that the the, uh, the metronome has changed, the project tempo has changed to match this song. The third song is going to be He Wants It All. select all these the way I typically prefer to move these is not to drag them because dragging can go kind of slow sometimes so I do um, command X for cut click where I want it and then paste so rename 112 BPM copy rename paste so these actions get pretty quick once you've done them enough times save this right now the fourth song and scroll all the way to the right came to my rescue drop that in there so if you have your tracks in order and you get used to this process it can go pretty quickly setting up your weekly or how often you do your live set can go pretty quick demonstrate what we can do with that high cut filter, the low pass filter that's set up on this knob. So that's kind of a neat feature. Okay, so we've used all of our full um, five key sets, um, but if you have a fifth song and it's just a loop like this one is, you can use those middle B flat and B keys. So this one is just going to be a tempo launch and a loop. So I'm going to cut and paste those down here. I'm not going to bother to move those over just now. Um, but you can start the tempo. I need to rename that 65 beats per minute. Here's our new tempo. And then launch the loop with this B. I'm going to stop clips. I think you'll hear delay continue. Yeah, there's a little tail on that one. So you hear the metronome continues. So if you wanted to cut out the loop and keep going with the tune, or with the song rather, um, you can, and then you can bring the loop back in at a different part of the song. 
So, so now we have five full songs um, set up in one set. It's ready to go and uh, easy to use with the with the MIDI controller. Um, so again, there, there there are different ways you can do it. Um, a lot of people will set things up in the arrange window where where things are laid out more um, linearly. That's not a word in a more of a linear way. Um, but this is just the way that I've done it for a number of years, and it's it's um, worked pretty well for me in terms of being fairly easy to use, but also giving me some flexibility in a live situation. So I hope that's been helpful. Um, in the meantime, please uh, go and visit www.ourworshipsound and uh, get signed up with my email list. And uh, you can also download some free music there. And then just get connected with some of the different things I'm doing there as well as on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, on the other videos on my YouTube channel. So thank you so much for watching. And I uh, we'll hope to uh, connect with you soon. And uh, thank you very much.